Have you ever wondered how maze puzzle illustrations are created? In this video, I will show you a simple technique in Adobe Illustrator with which you will be able to draw mazes in whatever shape and complexity you want. Before we go into Illustrator, I just wanted to show you a couple of quick references and examples of maze designs. So my favorites are usually the concentric ones, but you can use all kinds of shapes. You can use triangles, hexagons, or all kinds of polygons, even combination of shapes like this one here. But then you can be even more creative and use more interesting shapes like an egg, or even the alphabet can be turned into a maze and you can use custom shapes like a squirrel as your silhouette and you can even do isometric mazes. Now that can be a little bit more tricky so what we are going to focus on today are these more two-dimensional views of mazes. First I will show you how to do a concentric one and then I will show you a couple of more custom shapes and polygons as well. So let's get started. For the concentric mazes, the easiest tool to start with is the Polar Grid tool, which you will find in the Line Segment Tool category. So just right click on that, then choose Polar Grid Tool, and then simply click anywhere on the artboard. This will bring up the dialog box where you can specify the size, but more importantly, you can decide how many dividers you want. So essentially how complex you want to make your maze. Let's say I will choose 12 now. Unfortunately, there's no preview here. So that's just something that you will see at the end. The radial dividers are the divisions along the circle. So once again, this can increase the complexity of the maze. And for this, I am going to just use maybe 20. Once I click OK, we can see how it looks. And I'm just going to increase the size of it a little bit. All right, so that looks quite good. We can always increase the thickness of the strokes just to help us see it a little bit better. Now, one of the first things that I like to do is to expand this because we won't be able to work with it properly unless we use the object expand option. Now, the good thing about using the polar grid tool is that we have two separate groups generated whenever we use this tool. So we have, first of all, these dividers and then obviously the circles. So one of the first things that I would normally do is to select the lines group and just increase the size of it from the center by holding down the option or alt shift keys together. That way you can increase or decrease the size of them while still keeping their center point in the middle. The reason I'm doing this is because later on with the Shape Builder tool, this is going to help us to open up the parts and create the entry points for the maze. Now, the next thing I would recommend to do at this point is to create the solution path for yourself. So mark up the actual solution and normally I would start from the center and make my way or work my way outside. Or you can do it the other way around. But having the path set up in the beginning is going to make it much easier to work later on and to create a more complex and challenging maze. So for this, I would normally just use the pen tool and I like to use it with a different color. Let's just say red stroke. And I am going to start from the inside. So I just zoom a little bit closer and let's just say, okay, so this is the center and I'm going to make my way out. Now I'm going to curve this a little bit here and then just start drawing it out. Let's go further and then again another curve here. Now another way that you can create quickly curves with the pen tool is that you just simply click somewhere and then hold down the old key and bend the curve. Sometimes this is a faster and quicker way to create the curves. So now I'm just going to go here again, curve it. And then one of the things that's good in mazes is when you go backwards. So sometimes it's going to look confusing or more interesting when it's not linear. So just making your way from the outside in, but you also have to go backwards sometimes. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm going to come down, come back here and so on and so forth. I hope you get the idea. So all I'm doing here is really setting up the path. Now this can be as complex as you want and you can even have multiple solutions to the same maze. So if you want to do that, you can maybe use different colors. But once you have this line ready, 
then you can jump to starting constructing the maze itself. So I'm going to skip ahead and show you how to do that. So once you have your path or solution marked up, you can reduce the opacity on it. So I will set it to maybe 30% and also lock that object so it doesn't get in the way. Because now what we are going to do is to keep selecting everything often by using Command or Control A on the keyboard. So that selects all of the details. And then we will start using the Shape Builder tool and the Scissors tool. So these two you can access again with shortcuts, Shift M for the Shape Builder and S for Scissors. Uh, you can also change these shortcuts, by the way, from the Edit menu keyboard shortcuts. And under that, you just have to make sure you are under Tools and find the relevant tools. I'm going to stick to the default shortcuts. And I'm going to start with here on the outside. So I would like to enter the circle from this point here. Now, we can use the scissors here and just simply cut into the circle using C as my shortcut, I clicked on the two sides and then press backspace to delete it. So there you go, we already have an entry point. Now, again, having everything selected, and this mainly is important for the Shape Builder tool, I'm going to use the Alt key or Option key to cut through sections. There's two ways of doing this. You can also just draw over the sections you would like to merge, and you can see it does a good job. But sometimes you might need to hold down the Alt or Option key and click on certain segments that won't be able to merge with the rest of the design. So now we cut through here. Let's just continue merging these details. Once again, Alt click on that section there. Now I will switch to the scissors tool and just cut into it somewhere there. Using the direct selection tool, I can click on that section that I just separated and pressing backspace twice in this case, I can delete that detail. Then moving on, we can again either use the Alt key and click on these sections or just merge them together. I actually prefer doing it this way. I can be a little bit more specific where I want details to be merged. And then I want it to cut through in here in the middle. Once again, using the scissors tool, maybe we can just cut it here and then cut it there and then use the direct selection tool and delete that bit. Also, we want to delete this here. And then once again, we would like to cut through here. So I'm just using the scissors tool and cut away that section. Then using Shape Builder, I can cut through these divisions. Switching back to scissors, I can cut down that bit there and so on and so forth. Now there can be an issue sometimes when you cut through sections and especially when you cut close to a corner point, then you end up creating these little gaps. Now they can be fixed, but one thing that you have to also do is to ungroup all of the elements because in this case, these lines are in a separate group to these other lines. So you won't be able to join those anchor points together unless they are in the same group or there's no groups. So I'm going to just select these two and Command or Control Shift G. I am going to ungroup them and then maybe put them into a single group together. So now that they are in the same group, I can just use the direct selection tool make a quick selection here and then either use the command control J shortcut or clicking on this icon here in the options bar. So that's going to turn these two individual lines into a single one. And that's all really what you technically need to know. So after this, it's all down to your perseverance to be able to get through first creating the solution and then creating alternative paths that end up in dead ends. And you can choose to have multiple entry points as well. Uh, you can maybe even have multiple solutions if you wanted to. But just so you can see how this particular design turns out, I'm going to speed things up now. And then afterwards, I will show you a couple of different methods with different shapes. get to the final result and all the details are in place, there's a last thing that you can always do, and that is to convert everything into a compound path. Now, this is going to make things easier 
to work with. So I'm going to do just that, select all of these shapes together. And you can see it's made up of a lot of individual parts. But if I now press Command or Control 8, or go to the object menu, choose Compound Path Make, this is going to create a single object. Now, the cool thing about this is that now it's much easier to make selections of it. But more importantly, I can now use even gradients across the whole design. So if I choose a gradient for the stroke attribute, like this default orange yellow gradient, you can see now this is running across the whole thing. And I can increase the stroke size just so you can see it a little bit better. Plus, if we go into the gradient panel, we will be able to change this even to a radial gradient and then start messing around with the values, move and increase these values a bit, or maybe I can even change these colors and so on and so forth. Before we continue, I just wanted to let you know about our creative membership program. For a small monthly fee, you get access to over 200 hours of Adobe certified online training courses. Master all the tools and skills needed to become a professional graphic designer or illustrator. As a pro member, you will get mentoring from me and my team, access to webinars, student forum, and creative briefs to help you build an outstanding portfolio. Pro members can also download the project files for all of our YouTube tutorials. Sign up at yesimadesigner.com slash memberships and start your free trial today. And now let's head back to the tutorial. Now I promise that I'm going to show you other shapes as well. So besides the concentric maze, you can create in Illustrator all kinds of other formats. So I'm just going to create a new artboard here very quickly. And let's start this time with a hexagon. So I will use the polygon tool, with which when you are drawing, you can use the up and down arrows to quickly increase or decrease the amount of corner points. But let's just stick to a hexagon. So six corners, and I'll just set it up to something like that. I will just reset this back to a black stroke, maybe reduce the stroke size a bit. And then I will copy and paste this by using Control or Command C and then Control or Command F. That's the paste in place shortcut. Then holding down the Option key and the Shift key together, I will resize it and make it smaller. So that's going to be the center of the maze. By the way, when you are resizing, make sure under the transform options, the scale strokes and effects is turned off. Otherwise, the stroke size is going to keep updating while you are scaling it. But now that it's set up, I can just use the blend tool, W is the shortcut for it, with which I can click on the outer corners and then the one inside. Now, I actually prefer to do this before you go into any changes. And then all you have to do is to click on the small shape in the middle and then the larger shape on the outside. So sometimes it might need to be done the other way around, depending on how you set up your two original shapes. But if you've done everything correctly, then now you can double click on the blend tool icon where you will be able to turn on the preview option and switch the spacing to specified steps. And then you can just type in how many you want, or you can use the up and down arrows. So you can increase, decrease the divisions. And I think something like that looks good. I can click OK. And now to be able to work with this, all we will need to do is to choose Object, Expand. Similar to this, if we want to have the divisions across the maze, like we had with the polar grid, we can draw a line. So using the line tool, I can just come here in the center and then click and drag out, holding down the shift key. I will keep this straight and then go to the effect menu and under distort and transform, choose the transform option and have the preview option on, choose the bottom point as the center of the transformation. So that's going to be here in the center of the object. And then all I have to do is to set up the angle I want. Maybe in this case, I will choose 30 degrees and I am going to also include multiple copies. So let's just increase the amount of copies that we need. And I just realized we will have to increase the line itself as well. So it's like a spider web. That's the way it was set up. So simply using 30 degrees angle, 11 copies, 
And when I click OK, I can still go back to this line and just simply increase the size of it. Because it's a live effect, it's going to keep updating all the other instances. And I think that looks quite good already. Now, once again, similarly to before, because it's a live effect, we would have to expand the appearance for this to turn into individual lines or objects that we can work with. And from this point on, it's exactly the same method what we've done before, using the scissors and shape builder and maybe even the eraser tool. And that is really all you need to know to be able to create custom mazes in Illustrator. I would love to see what you create with these techniques. So if you want to share your work with us, just use hashtag yes, I'm a designer on your preferred social media platform. And we might be able to even feature your work on our own channels. Thanks a lot for watching. Like and share this video if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified whenever we release new videos. Click on the link on my right and start your membership today to get access to over 200 hours of training courses and personal mentoring by me and my team of creative professionals. Have fun learning guys and I will see you in the next one.